Hi guys, this is Louise, welcome to my channel. Today I thought I would give you a tour of all of my watercolor stuff, like my whole supply setup, everything that I use <laughs> for watercolor painting. So let's get started. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff here right now and I don't actually use all of this all the time. If I were to only show you what I use most of the time, it would be a very, very short video. I do occasionally use all of the stuff here, so I'm just gonna walk you through it and uh, explain what all of this is and what I do with it. Let's start with paper, because it is arguably the most important aspect of watercolor painting. These two, I mean this brand, is my my absolute favorite one. It, it's very affordable. I mean there's a lot of sheets to begin with, so I feel like I can really, I can practice with this and not feel guilty for using up my paper. Um, and this is probably my favorite size, my most used size. It's uh, A4 and uh, this is the same paper but it's a three size so it's a bit larger this is a cold pressed and fairly fine grained paper i don't know if you can see that but it's it has a little bit of texture so this is the kind of paper that i use 99 percent of the time when i paint but i have also started to buy this slightly fancier <laughs> paper this is Arches. It's one of the most well-known brands of watercolor paper. 100% cotton paper, which is the like the gold standard for watercolor painting. It soaks up the paint really beautifully and uh, it's a much easier to work with. This is expensive watercolor paper and I don't use it unless I have a commission or I really want to make something super high quality and I really want to be able to work with the paper more and not be afraid of you know the paper tearing or buckling or as much so that is it for the paper let's look at paint next so I have tried three different watercolor paint brands if you will the first one that I bought is this one and it's Winsor & Newton Kaufman watercolors. So it's a student grade set of, I think this is 24 colors, if I'm not mistaken. It's one of those really affordable, good set of beginner paints. And the paints are, they're all right. As you can see, I haven't used them that much because I decided to to try out another brand that a lot of other watercolor YouTubers had mentioned. And that is the White Knights set, which was the second set that I bought. And I have used this one quite a lot. If I were starting out, just starting out with watercolor today, and I had no paints at home, this is the set that I would get. I almost think that this was cheaper than this one if I remember correctly. Um, I mean, I guess it depends on where you buy it, but these are really affordable and they're super high quality and I really liked the, the feel of them, the, the look and the feel of them. The brand is St. Petersburg and this set is called White Knights. The third set, and this is the one that I use right now, this is Winsor & Newton also, but these are the professional grade paints and this is the 12 color half pan set. I have made some changes to it. I have taken some of my empty full pans from, I think, from this <laughs> set and I have augmented it with some tube paints. These are Winsor & Newton professional um, watercolors in tube, which I'm going to show you next, but I have complemented this because I like using this um, case. I like this case. I like that it's metal and that it's white. I don't, I'm not really a fan of using plastic as a palette because the paint sort of clumps together and you can't really see how it looks. Uh, compared to here, you can see that it's much more spread out and I can see what it's actually going to look like on the paper. So I like this one and it doesn't take up too much space on my desk either. I'm a huge fan of this brand and these colors. They are really 
vibrant, really strong. We have lemon yellow, we have, I think this, that's Windsor yellow, and Windsor red, Alizarin crimson, Windsor blue, but it's sort of like, it's a warmer shade of blue, it's kind of like cerulean, it's, I think it's the shade right here, a warm blue, and then it's ultramarine, indigo, one of my absolute favorite colors, and sap green, and this is um, gold green. I don't know, I think a blogger, a watercolor blogger mentioned it and was totally in love with it, and I just absolutely hate it. Uh, it might have something to do with the fact that she was a landscape painter and I paint birds. I don't really use green shades that much, but it's a really yellowish green. Yellow ochre, raw sienna, burnt sienna, my second absolute most favorite color, um, burnt umber, raw umber, which is something that I've added in. It wasn't in the original, and I don't think that burnt umber was in the original case either. And then we have sepia, really dark brown, and black. And I use a lot of black, and so I have filled this pan up several times with my tube black. I really recommend this um, if you're a serious watercolor painter and you want, if you want really good quality. And as I mentioned, I also have some tube paints. And these are also Winsor Newton Professional watercolors. I haven't used these a lot, to be honest. I have mostly just used them to fill up my pans in this set. If you're an abstract painter, or maybe a landscape painter, uh, there are lots of cool things that you can do with these tube paints. You can pre-wet the paper, and then you can put these on dry onto wet paper, and it's gonna create these really nice, cool effects with lots of color depth and vibrancy. I'm lazy, you know, I just like to dip my brush in a pan and be ready to go. When they dry up, they tend to like crumble into little pieces and it makes it really difficult to work with. Then we have, of course, water. You're gonna need water if you paint with watercolors. And I usually, I usually use two uh, of these because sometimes I use one of them to rinse out my warmer colors and the other one to rinse out the colder colors so that they won't mix and contaminate my brush. And other times I just use one of them for the like the first rinse and the second one for a more cleaner rinse to really clean out the brush. I do prefer glass because it's easier to clean and uh, it won't, like when these are filled with paints, it won't stain it the way that I would if I were to use like white plastic. Now let's look at the brushes, starting with the largest ones. Um, this is the calligraphy brush. I like this brush because you can really saturate it with a lot of water. You can get it really wet and a lot of paint in it and you can paint really big with it. What I don't like is that it often releases these little hairs. They do shed and that is not something you want in a painting. You have to like pick out little pieces of hair and it tends to ruin your whole painting. This is called a hockey brush and it's very common among landscape, landscape painters because they tend to like to use big flat brushes. It's really fun to work with this when it's wet. I mean now it looks really bushy. It's super soft actually but when it's wet you can make these really smooth um, washes with it across the paper. And then we have, let's look at the flat brushes first. I think this is Winsor & Newton foundation brushes. It's their very cheapest line of brushes, but these are fine with the only exception of, I think that this, I think the wood in this chipped for a bit. That's why I taped it, but and I have one of these where the actual brush head has fallen off. So, I mean, I guess they're not the most sturdy, sturdiest of brushes, but they're, they're all right. This is one that I got more recently. I just wanted to complement with a smaller flat brush. I use flat brushes sometimes when I paint watercolor, but mostly I use them when I paint with gouache or like a more um, opaque medium because I like the, the look of the brushwork. But when I paint with watercolor, I prefer round brushes. Which brings me to the three brushes that I use like 90% of the time, and that's these three. They're Winsor Newton Kaufman, so they're a little step up from these two. 
I use this um, number 16 for putting down the, the largest shapes and then the number 12 I use for the more like um, the smaller shapes and then I have a number six and this is for the very tiniest little details. So the number 16 and the number 12 and the number six, those are my holy trinity of watercolor brushes. But I also have, I also have this one and uh, this is a really cheap one and it's been like, I, I can't even see the text anymore. I don't know what this might be. It might be a two or a three, like size two or three, but it's really, as you can see, it's really tiny. This type of brush is called a rigger brush. And as you can see, it has a very long strand, so really long and thin. And this is good for, you can see when I dip it in the water, it gets a really long and thin point. So you can create these really like whisker thin little shapes. I know some artists use a rigor brush to write their signature, but uh, I have tried that a few times and I can't get it to work. And then we also have some water brushes. And I do like water brushes sometimes. They make it really easy, especially if you're like on the fly, if you're outside painting or if you're traveling. As you can see, you just fill them up with water. It's really easy. You can, I mostly just like hold them like this and then suck up the water in it super quick. And then screw this on and then you just, the water just flows through the tip and there will be like a steady stream of water through. I mostly only use them when I'm outside painting or I just want to make like a tiny little, like a coloring, a small illustration that I've made really quick. A few accessories that I don't use a lot, but that are a bit fun. And one of them is a straw. This is just a paper straw. And you can use it to like blow around the paint. I did this earlier on when I just started painting. I painted a lot of abstract watercolors and, and I found this was really fun, you know, to just put down lots of paint and then blow it around and, and create interesting shapes. And uh, it's a cool thing. Try it out if you haven't. It's actually, you can be really creative with it. And then also um, sponges that you can like dip in, dip in paint. I mean, this one, you can see how, how much of a texture there is. So if, if I were to dip this in some green paint and then dab it over the paper, it could look like tree shapes, for example. And then we have salt. This is just sea salt crystals. When you spread salt on watercolor paint that's still wet or damp, the salt soaks up the paint and it creates a really cool texture effect. Watercolor is a tricky medium because you you have to go from light to dark. You can't paint lighter colors on top of darker ones. If you want to, to maintain white areas, you have to not paint over it. And I do find that that is the, like, the preferred look for me, is if I can manage to really leave out the white of the paper. But there are some tricks if I can't do that. One of them is to use masking fluid, which is like a sort of gum-like liquid that you paint on top of, like your sketch, you paint with masking fluid where you want to maintain the white and it creates like a film of rubber on top of it. And so you put that on and then you paint on top of it with watercolor and then you rub off these little um, masking fluid pieces and it, it just comes right off and super easy. I don't use it that much because it's kind of tedious. It's hard to control exactly how it looks and it creates these really hard edges around you know where the masking fluid has been but it's one method and it's really useful to have in a lot of cases but mostly i just end up going in after after the fact like when my watercolor paint has dried i go in with either a white gel pen or i use white gouache and as you can see i i've used it a lot <laughs> 
gouache is essentially just it's like watercolor but it's opaque you can actually paint light over dark with it and so it's really useful too if i've made a mistake somewhere in my watercolor paintings i usually get the help of gouache and sort of like cheat my way out of it but mostly i just use it for the last like finishing touches and gouache is excellent for that because you can also if you were to make a mistake with gouache you can just wet it and wipe it off like with watercolor whereas if i were to use acrylic or ink there would be no going back gouache works really well together with watercolor and you know the final stuff that i use i use a this is like a kitchen towel a kitchen wipe i don't know what you call it but i usually wet this and squeeze out all of the water so it's just damp and then i just keep it by my side and when i have too much water on my brush or too much paint i just dab it off here and then of course we have paper towels which are really useful i use it when i need my brush completely dry i just wipe it off here i use it if i manage to get paint on my hands or if i spill paint some somewhere but it's probably the most useful for fixing mistakes like when you you manage to drip paint on somewhere on your painting where you didn't want it you can often just press it on top and it will soak it right up or you can just take a brush and wet it with some water and you can wet like the stain or wet the paint on the paper and then soak it up with a clean piece of of tissue and it will come right off so you have a lot more room for fixing mistakes and making changes with watercolor than you think and paper towels is the way to do that and then i use painter's tape i believe this is called i use this to just tape the paper down the watercolor paper down onto a surface mostly i just use my desk for that but you have to be really careful when you tear this off this is hardware store painters tape like professional painters who paint like windows and houses and stuff so this is pretty heavy duty if i were to just rip this off it would probably tear the paper so you have to be you have to pull really carefully to not damage your painting hi again that's all i have for you today i hope you liked it um if you have any questions for me any watercolor related questions please ask them in the comments if you are completely new to watercolor and you want to get started but you feel like overwhelmed by all of the things and all of the tips and supplies and everything i have created a free mini course that you can access right away i'll put the link to it in the description thanks for watching and i'll see you in another video